Hello and welcome back to the Magical Vox tutorial. In this one, I'll show you a few tools you can use to speed up your object creation to create scenes faster. So let's say you have an object that you want to duplicate multiple times and whatever changes you make to this object, you want it to apply to the duplicates. What you can do is press tab to go into world mode. Um, go over to the edit section under all in this tool drop down, click on copy objects as reference. And then if you hit um, paste objects, drag this out. If you click on the one um, that you selected copy objects as reference, any changes you make to this object affects this duplicates. So I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to just go, go ahead and duplicate this a few times. It's important to note that you have to copy the one that you used as the reference. If I selected this and hit copy and paste, if I make changes here, you can see it doesn't affect the um, one we just copied because this object was not the one selected as reference. In fact, it was this one. Let's say I have this scene here and I wanted to put, uh, let's say a light source in the center. I can easily do that by pressing this plus icon to create a new object and pressing tab to go back into object mode and going over the shape, I can just hit ellipsoid and maybe I make it a bit smaller. So maybe say 20, press ellipsoid, put it towards the center and change the color to say red. I go into render and I can alt left click this to select the color, which allows me to directly edit its material. I can give it an emission and a power. Power adjusts the um, intensity of the light and emission dictates how far the light will travel outwards. So right now it looks kind of weird because bloom is not on. So if you turn on bloom, increase its size. I think it looks a little bit more realistic. If you want it to look more like a light, you can select the uh, color that it's emitting and change its saturation. So if you make it towards more white, it'll look a lot more obviously white, which is more of a light color. But if you turn it maybe just down a bit, you can see it's emitting a red color, but more looking more toward like a light. I'm gonna keep it like that. And I wanted to make these like glass to make it look a little more realistic or for the light to shine outwards. So I'm gonna alt left click any of these uh, cubes here because they're all the same color and um, go over to the matter section change it to glass change its transparency you can play with its roughness and its uh, reflectiveness right here change how you want it uh, the glass to behave as well as change its density. You can also go over to the sample section and chain, uh, turn on these settings so that it gives you a more um, different type of look for your glass. This is looking pretty cool. Um, it looks kind of bright right here, so I might want to like do some cool design on top. So let's say you take this, uh, actually, create a new object and place it over the cube move it upwards like this and I'm just gonna create a flat plane like this with maybe a couple of squares and shapes like this. so You can maybe make this go up a little bit and 
using the face mode and attach setting, you can adjust, you can make these varying heights. And maybe change this material to metal. And give it a slightly more attractive look. I want to make it more like glass. And so right now, let's say, um, let's say we also duplicate this towards the bottom so that it looked like this. How it's very difficult to actually change the, uh, let's say we want to change this sphere inside. It's kind of difficult to actually make edits to this sphere with all of this clutter that's surrounding the sphere. So what you can do is um, make use of the layer section. So I want to select maybe all of these cubes surrounding the sphere. And with all of them selected, you can just um, click towards the left hand side of the layer. Um, so I'll put it on layer four. This arrow that was originally here is put here. So if I let go, you can see the outline color has changed from an orange to a blue, which corresponds to the layer. And you can rename it too. So you can say you. And now if we want to make changes to the emission underneath, you can just click on the circ uh, the color icon and it actually hides all of the, uh, the entire layer. So you can now make direct edits easily to this sphere. Right now the sphere isn't very centered with its surroundings. So what you can do is um, go over to align and click on an object you want to align something with. Align objects to center is put the sphere in the center of this and um, make this if this isn't centered with this, let's say it's like off center like that, you can left click both of these and do that like so. And it will position this and this to the, um, to the center. So let's bring back this cube. Oops. Let's bring back the uh, cube layer and take a look at what we created so far. I think it looks pretty good, but we didn't make any changes to the uh, actual cube that we duplicated. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's say we wanted to maybe cut these sides like that. Now all of these have been cut like so. I want to do something like this where I have it so it's cut like this and I'm actually going to put a color on the inside. Maybe put red. And so my cubes look like this. I'm actually going to make it go all the way around. I'm going to orient the uh, cubes to the outside. So I have something like this. Maybe I want to give this an emission as well. And instead of making it red, I'm going to make it blue. So let's go ahead and click on one of the cubes, make it uh, blue. Just pick any blue, changes all of it to blue. And now I can change this emission. So we have something that looks kind of cool. So with that, we only used two, um, two things that really made this project go by a lot faster. 
which was the copy objects as reference, and the layer mode. Layer mode allows you to select objects to, and to put for a layer. So for instance, you left click, and if you want to select multiple objects, you hold shift, and you left click another object. So now I've selected these. I'm gonna put on layer one. Now it's more organized. I can hide both layer one and the cube to gain access to something I want to edit. I'm gonna bring it back and just click on these uh, colors. And the reference is one where if you want to duplicate multiple objects and you want to make changes to those objects, instead of changing each individual object, you would just make one reference and duplicate that reference so that any changes you make to the reference you make to its duplicates. And let's say you want to get, let's say you want to save this camera angle, this orth, um, orthographic camera position. You can just hit the seven on the keyboard. And now if you move the pan the camera around to get a better look at something that you want to fix and you are done fixing, you want to go back to take a picture of, of your render. You can just press eight on your keyboard and it takes you to your previous saved camera. And if you want to focus in, let's say on these varying heights of rectangles, you would just left click. And currently it doesn't really look like you did anything, but if you go to the camera setting here and change its aperture to something astronomically high, you can see the lights on the outside start to blur and you focus more on what's your, what you're clicking on. So if I was to click right here, um, you can see a lot of the focus has shifted here. I'm going to click back here. And you can obviously change the exposure and vignette settings so you have something that looks kind of cool. So with that, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Of course, leave your questions in the comments below if you found any trouble, and I'll try my best to answer them to the best I can. Thank you, and I'll see you guys in the next